One of the most common questions I get is how to draw hair. In this video, I want to give you three different ways to approach drawing hair for comics and illustration. If drawing hair confuses you or overwhelms you, this video is for you. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Thomas Patilli. I'm a comic book artist and an illustrator. If you get value out of this video, be sure to like and subscribe. So as artists, we're all kind of like sponges in a way, and we're collecting different inspirations and techniques along the way. So my particular understanding of something like hair really comes from a lifetime of just observing the way a lot of other artists that I like have drawn hair. I don't think that just applies to drawing hair. I think that's just the way we kind of develop our quote unquote styles. I know many of us would like to think that we're super original, but I don't think there really is such a thing. I think we're all kind of just amalgams, combinations of our inspirations and interests and all the little things that we've picked up along the way. But every time I post a video on drawing or inking hair, it's sort of inevitable that someone is going to ask for some sort of tip in terms of drawing hair. I know that it's a challenging thing to approach at times because there's so many components and so many strands. It certainly can be overwhelming and a tricky subject to tackle. So I decided to dissect my own understanding of drawing hair, how I go about it, the way I kind of observe other artists drawing it. And I wanted to try and articulate it in a way that makes sense to you. So here we go. I think a good place to start is to realize that drawing hair is no different than drawing any other object or texture. With that being said though, I think it's important also to remember that comic art and illustration really is a shorthand for things that we see in reality. In other words, it's sort of like iconography. Like icon design, it's really meant to describe a real life thing, but using less lines to do so and less detail. So think of like a traffic sign or a logo design or an emoji. You can call it like a simplified version, but remember, simple doesn't always mean easy. Speaking of easy, our main objective is really an easy read. Like most things in comic art and illustration, clarity is very important. You don't want the reader or the viewer to be confused as to what they're seeing. So you want to render and draw things so that they can be understood from all different angles and all different sizes and vantage points. And rendering details is going to be different depending on what kind of art you're making and what its ultimate use is for. So for instance, imagine you were like a portrait painter, an oil portrait painter, and a, a prominent king or some important person hired you to draw their official portrait. Your approach to rendering the details on that king's portrait is going to be very different than if you were to create a character for a comic strip based on that king. In a comic strip and even a series of book illustrations, it's likely that you're going to have to draw that character over and over again from different angles, in all sorts of movements. And in order to do that efficiently and effectively, you really want to streamline your design so that you can render all those details in a way that is clear and easy to read. That's going to be very different than the oil painting that you do because that person is going to be in one fixed pose and it's likely going to just be on their wall and you're not going to have to account for any kind of like things that happen in the reproduction process and there's going to be much less storytelling involved. So if you wanted to, you could really get hyper detailed and all the lines on the hair and the marks on the face, whatever it might be. You could put everything you have into just that one portrait. I say this because it's important that we keep in mind that as comic artists and illustrators, it's really our job to understand very complicated things and objects and put them into a visual language that makes sense to a reader. It's really like an abstraction of reality. It doesn't have to be wacky and weird and super cartoony. There's a spectrum there. It can be very realistic and it can be very cartoony. Regardless though, it's all an abstraction of reality. Even that real fancy oil painting, that's still an abstraction of reality as well. It's just up to you to decide what brand of abstraction you want for your style and what works best for the story or the overall 
mood and tone of the piece that you're creating. It's important we keep this in mind because something like hair, which has many components, it can be overwhelming if you don't understand it first as a solid structure that has form. It's very much like drawing anything else. And so my hope with a video like this is to help you think about drawing hair in a way that seems less elusive and confusing. I'm not gonna go over every kind of hair type and hairstyle, perhaps that might be for another video down the line, but hopefully this gives you a foundation for which to build different hairstyles and hair textures off of. So here are three different ways of drawing hair for someone who may be drawing comics and illustration. So the first one is more of a solid shape and outline. I like to kind of think of it like a sculpture or even a helmet that kind of takes the shape of a different hairstyle. So rather than thinking about strands in any kind of way, it's really just one solid piece on the head. This approach uses a solid line to draw out the hairline, which will also help in suggesting the shape of the face itself. Then it also traces the edges of the particular hairstyle but not much is really made of everything in between the outline of the hairline and the outline of the outer hairstyle. For instance, if the character has black hair, that's just filled in pure black. And if they have blonde or lighter hair, that's generally left open for color. Or if it's gonna be printed in black and white, it's sort of understood that that reads as any color that's lighter than black. This approach to drawing hair can be looked at as a more cartoony approach, and sometimes it is used in a more cartoony style, but I don't think it has to be either. For instance, if you have a slightly more realistic style and you draw a face in a little bit more of a rendered realistic way, but then you draw the hair in this more graphic, simple, cartoony approach, that juxtaposition between the two styles I think can make for a very interesting visual and an interesting character design. The next approach is similar to the solid mass or sculpture approach, but it suggests more of the strands. Because we're not trying to create hair designs that are photorealistically, where we're gonna draw and render each particular hair strand, our hair strands are much less individually drawn. That would be very overwhelming, not only for the artist drawing them, but for the viewer and reader looking at them. So I like to think of hair strands much less as individual lines and strands of hair, and more as these sort of clumps of hair. These clumps represent large areas of single strands without having to draw every single strand of hair. A visual comparison I like to make are like fat noodles. I think of like egg noodles or whatever those noodles they use for pad CU. Staying with the pasta analogy, I can't help it, I'm Italian, but I think of each individual hair strand as like one angel hair pasta strand, but the clumps are more like a thicker noodle or a strip of lasagna or something like that. But if that analogy makes you too hungry, I get it. <laughs> Some people um, often describe these clumps as ribbons as well. Either way, whether it's pasta or ribbons, I think the important thing to understand is that these clumps, they sort of flow and overlap and they help you suggest movement in your drawing. It makes it much more natural. They could also add a certain sense of drama as well by sometimes like obstructing the face. And to break up those clumps, for variety's sake, I sometimes like to add an individual strand or two here or there, just to sort of suggest hair once again, just with a single line, kind of like throwing one of those angel hair pastas in the mix with all the other thicker noodles. Variety and contrast of shapes really helps when you're rendering something like hair. This method could also work for curly hair as well. I mean, drawing every individual curl would be insane. So clumping the curls together in certain areas, it's the same idea. And I think it helps simplify that texture of hair as well. The third and final approach for this video is sort of like a blending of the first two. It still has clumps like the last one, but it's a little less and much more subtle. 
I like to think of the approach to this design as much more open and breathable. Perhaps it's a little easier on the eyes and simplified in a different kind of way. The biggest difference with this one is that the hairline itself is open in areas, only suggested in key spots. So there's a lot less of a distinction between the hair and the face. It has a much more like natural approach. This method could work for all textures of hair, but as far as styles go, I think it really lends itself to like a men's haircut or a woman's shorter cut. Also, I feel like because the hairline kind of blends into the face more, I think it works for like a lighter colored hair or a gray hair. Also, the clumps can be suggested using shorter lines, fewer of them as well. So creating simplified versions of real life things is a real skill in and of itself. I think in a lot of ways, understanding that all of us, comic artists, illustrators, fine artists, sculptors, we're all abstract artists in one way or another. This simple realization can really help you approach drawing anything in a much less confused and overwhelming way. So primarily, it's very much about clarity for the reader and the viewer, and then also efficiency on the side of the artist as well. How do you draw these things in a visually interesting way without having to use like a triple zero brush to render every strand of hair? So anyway, I hope this video was helpful and makes some kind of sense. Like I said, this is a question that I often get and it's something that I've been thinking about quite a bit. Like, how do I articulate the way I go about drawing hair and relay that to you in a way that makes sense? So if it did make sense and it was helpful, please let me know in the comments so I know I'm kind of on the right track. If not, I could rework this and make another video on this topic in the future that's even better. Also, this whole topic of drawing hair is seemingly endless in many ways. So I definitely feel like there can be many more videos on this topic down the line. We didn't even talk about lighting or how to ink dark hair versus lighter hair different textures, different styles. There's a lot more to go into. So if those are videos that you would like to see in the future, please do let me know in the comments below. It really helps me understand what kind of videos I can make that you guys wanna see. And as always, if you have a better suggestion or a helpful tip when it comes to drawing something, in this case, hair, let us all know in the comments below. I'm all ears myself. I've said this many times, but I really do love the comment section on this channel. I get a lot out of it. I hope you guys are getting a lot out of it as well. Once again, if you like this video, hit that like button. It helps with the algorithm and sending this over to people that might be on the search for how to draw hair better. And if you wanna find out more about me and anything that I might have to offer, check out the description below with all my links and all that good stuff. I appreciate you watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.